Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. We're going to do a little bit more in-depth on the if, then, else, and if code block. So let's go back into our database here and I've got the code pulled up for our button click event here and let's do a change of some operators here. So right now it's if x is equal to 2 then yes no is true and else uh, yes no is equal to false. So let's change this to greater than. So if x is greater than 2 then it evaluates to true. If not then it equals false. So let's see what we get as a result here. Go back into the database here and yes it's true. 3 is greater than 2. All right, so let's try something else. Let's do is greater than, or let's go actually less than or equal to two. So is three less than or equal to two? No, so we should get a false return here. All right, and that takes out the checkbox, so it's false. All right, let's see, what else can we do? Let's try, um, let's do x is not equal to two. So we're saying x is not equal to 2. If this is true, where x is not equal to 2, then you're going to return yes, no, equal to true. All right, see how that works? So this is a true statement. Therefore, we're going to run the if true code block here underneath the if statement. Save that, quickly run it here, and lo and behold, we get our checkbox back. If I click on it, if I clear it out and click on the go button, it always checks it, okay? So, now that we've got that identified, let's go over some other things. So let's say if x is not equal to 2 and x is greater than 1, then we want to evaluate or run this code, or else we're going to run this code. So just think about this for a second here. We've got this evaluation happening and this evaluation happening. And with the and with with the and keyword here, what we're saying is that both of these must equal to true. Both of these must be true in order for us to run this bit of code. If neither of these two are correct, if neither of these two are true, then this will run instead. So since 3 is not equal to 2, and 3 is also greater than 1, then we should get a true statement. So let's just see how that works. Click on yes, or click on go, and yes, we do get a checkbox when we checkbox uh, checked when we click on the go button. So that's good. So let's say, what if we did this as 1? All right, what if x is 1? So x is not equal to 2, that's a true statement, but x is not greater than 1 because x is equal to 1. So we should get a yes, no return of false. All right, so let's see what that looks like here. When I click on go, notice it doesn't check it. Or if I do check it manually and then click on the go button, it unchecks it for me. Okay, so that's definitely the case. That's definitely running this bit of code because 1 is not greater than 1. All right, so let's try this. What if we did or? So now what we're saying is if x is not equal to 2 or if x is greater than 1, then go ahead and run and, and say yes, no is equal to true. And are either of those two statements correct? Yes, 1 is not equal to 2. So let's just make sure that that works properly here. And lo and behold, there's our checkbox. So that ev evaluates to true. But what if we say 2? All right, so what if x is equal to 2? Well, x is equal to 2, so therefore this would be a false statement, right? This would return as false. However, 2 is greater than 1, so we should still return a result of true. Let's see if that works. Let me uncheck it and click on the go, and lo and behold, there's our checkbox, all right? So you can see how that works. That's how you do and an or, and you can actually extend this out. You can add as many ands as you want. Uh, X is greater than zero, or whatever type of evaluations you want, okay? So 
And just so that you're aware, if you do this, then if you do this and evaluation, that just means that if either this or this and this is true, then you should return a true result, which we would in that particular case. All right? So I hope I haven't confused anybody. I haven't lost anybody yet because we're going to move on to a little bit more complicated things because let's say x plus 2 divided by 4. All right? So if x plus 2 divided by 4, if this equal, if, if this is true, oh, you know what? Is I forgot to say is equal to 1. Okay. Because let's say 2 in here, 2 plus 2 divided by 4 equals 1. So if this is a true statement, then we should get a true result, right? So let's go ahead and run that code right now and uncheck that. And we should get true, right? Wrong. Why is this not returning as checked? Well, that's because of the order of operations. And you may remember this from algebra if you took it, or pre-algebra. You have certain operators, the division, for example, which are priority over the other operators. So divided happens first. The division equation happens first. So it's going and saying 2 divided by 4, which is 0.5. Now add 2 to that. So 2 plus 0.5, that equals 2.5. That doesn't equal 1. So this is evaluating as false because the division is happening first. Well, how do you solve that? I want to make sure that x plus 2 gets evaluated first before we divide by 4. Well, just like in algebra, you simply surround, you wrap that equation in parentheses. So I'm saying I want to perform this first before performing anything else. And what we'd get then as a result is that it's true. All right? So I hope you can see how the parentheses will definitely impact how things are calculated in your if uh, then else statement. Um, all right, so one other thing I just want to point out, you can also wrap uh, this up in parentheses. That would be perfectly fine. And also, I don't, I, if you don't recall, we had, um, okay, so we have like x is greater than or, or not equal to 2, and so we could do and, um, or oh, we could do or, uh, x is greater than 1, and x is greater than uh, 0. We could wrap this up in parentheses as well, so that we're saying, I want to evaluate this first. Okay, I want to say where x is greater than 1 and x is 0 is equal to, uh, is greater than 0. This will be evaluated first. Oops. What did I do wrong here? You know what? I might be wrong there. Oh, there we go. Okay. I added that extra parenthesis in there. All right. Let's try that again here. All right. There we go. All right. So you can see we can evaluate what's in the parentheses first, including the and statement before performing this particular one. And that doesn't really happen very often, but in case you run across that, I'd like you to at least be aware of it. All right, now the last thing is, <laughs> this may throw off a few people, but there's another little uh, caveat to the if-then-else statement, and that is the keyword of not, N-O-T. And if we put N-O-T, if not x uh, is not equal to 2, then we get yes, no, equal to true. So what this is doing is this is reversing the pattern here so that if this, um, that this code here will run if this equation is false. You see how that's flipping it? So if this is false, then run this code. If this is true, then run what's in the else block. So it's a way to kind of flip those around, and it's it's... Sometimes you have to do that. You have to, especially when you're not dealing with mathematical equations. You may be doing um, statements where you're comparing two strings to each other. You can't do math, so there's no way to do, well, there is a way to do not equal to, but you'll, you'll get the point. There are other circumstances where 
this is simply not a viable option uh, for comparison. So you use the not operator in order to say when this when when this is false, then run this code. But if it is true, then run this code. So that's just one little caveat to the if not uh, or if then else and if statement. All right, and one last thing I just want to cover here. Notice that at the end of our subroutine here, notice that we have the end sub. You'll see that, like I said, littered throughout all the code that you'll run into in Visual Basic. You need some sort of ending statement to uh, the counterpart as the counterpart to your beginning statement here. So here's how we started our subroutine. That's how we s signal to v Visual Basic that it's the end of our subroutine, just like I had with the if statement, and there's our end if. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next chapter in our video series. And uh, please, uh, if you like this video, if you like any of my series, feel free to subscribe. Let me know that you're uh, that you're enjoying these videos, and also don't be afraid to let me know what you'd be interested in seeing next. Okay, thank you.